we like to call it the buoy spa. This is where we bring them back once we've recovered them. We clean them up and we refurbish them and recalibrate everything before we send them back out. It's just like any other job, when you're working with sensors, you're always going to have cable failures or instrument failures or software failures. And you have to troubleshoot that sometimes out in the field and sometimes we'll just bring the whole system back into the lab. Actually, what just happened this past winter was a combination of water temperatures that dropped below freezing point and winds that spiked above 50 miles an hour, which was crazy. I mean, we had never seen it before. And the combination of the two together caused spray, and the spray was freezing, and it had enough ice accumulation on the top of the buoy that the buoys healed over. And this happened to several buoys, which then caused water intrusion on the inside of the buoy and significant damage. So we're still actually recovering from that. Hopefully, we won't see that again. CBIB stands for Chesapeake Bay Interpretive Buoy System, and it's a system of buoys spread throughout the Chesapeake Bay that takes both atmospheric and oceanographic measurements and transmits all the data real time. Our main mission is to keep our 10 buoys that we have up and alive and transmitting as often as we possibly can and deliver the data to as many users as we can. It's fun, it, you know, it's nice to get paid to, to drive a boat and be out on the bay. You know, it's the best job you could ask for. So we'll pull alongside the buoy. Sorry. And try to keep a good distance where we're not pounding on the buoy. A day on the water is pretty physical. It can be a little bit of, we call buoy wrestling or buoy wrangling. When you're trying to fix something out in the bay and the winds pick up and the waves are a little too high that you can't do the intricate electrical work on the cable or you can't quite swap an instrument and you can't complete the mission because of weather or some other unforeseen thing that you can't control. But obviously safety is first. All the data is free to the public, it's online, and a lot of people just use it for your local sailors and kayakers who want to just see the wind speed, the currents, the wave heights, to check the local conditions before they go out in the water. And then there are teachers and researchers and educators out there who use the data as part of their curriculum, or um, students who can use the data as part of their research projects in school. And more of that would be great. <laughs> it's good to also see what's happening locally in the Bay. We can see our temperatures are rising or our carbon is increasing or what have you and correlate that to other industries, you know, like oysters and, and crabs. I might be too heavy. So I think it affects a lot of different types of people, not just the local sailor. But everything real time is coming through, ADCP is coming through, compass, barometer, all the good stuff. You never know who exactly is using exactly what part of the data. All right, you're off. So even being able to fix the little things actually adds up to quite a lot. All right, you're good. Soon we will have all 10 back out working. When we fix something out in the field, especially when it's a complicated system, it obviously feels great and it's exciting. Once the whole system's up and running and 100%, I will be definitely relieved. But for now, I just focus on the little things and they'll add up and eventually we'll get there. <laughs>